countless gifts of love. With countless gifts of and love. And still is ours today. And still is ours today. life be near us. In all our lives be near With ever joyful hearts. With ever joyful hearts. And blessed hearts. peace to cheer us. And blessed peace to cheer us. And keep us in His grace. And keep us in His grace. And guide grace. us when perplexed. And guide us when perplexed. And free us from all ills. And free from all in, in this world and the next in this world and the next thank we all our with God. hearts and hands and voices with hearts and hands and voices who wondrous things have done who with wondrous things have done in whom the world rejoices in whom the world rejoices from our mother's arms, from our mother's has blessed arms, us on our way, has blessed us on our way, with countless gifts of with love, countless gifts of love, and still is ours today, and still is ours Salute your brethren only. What do ye more than others? 
do not deal with publicans so. Be therefore perfect, even, even as, as your Father, Father which is in heaven, is, is perfect. For what man is there of you, whom if his son has bread to eat, you give him a stone? Or, or if he ask a fish, will you give, give him a serpent? If then being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children. How much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be, to be conformed to the image of his Son, that, that he might, might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, then he also called, and whom he called, then he also justified, and whom he justified, then he also glorified. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving. Together. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow or turning. Amen. 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 Let's say that verse again from Nahum chapter 1 verse 7. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and knoweth them that trusted in him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
Lord is my shepherd. He goes before me. Defender behind me. I won't fear. I'm filled with anointing. My cup's overflowing. No weapon shall harm me. I won't fear. Hallelujah. I am not alone. He's my comfort. Mountains and valleys, his joy is refreshing, restores my soul, mercy and goodness. Assurance. I'll see his glory face to face. Your spirit lives. 
worship is my worship all of my worship receive my worship all of my worship is my worship
will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves, where my heart becomes free and my shame is Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for To be overcome by your presence, Lord Your presence, Lord There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare your living hope. Your presence, Lord. Shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and
of your goodness. Can we just sing that chorus once more? It is what you have in your heart, what you desire of God and His presence that I want you to sing this morning. Not because we are in the corporate worship and everybody is singing together. Where you are is the place where you are meeting with God, one and one who even know. Flood this Come place. Flood this fill the atmosphere with your presence, Lord. Touch lives, touch lives, your heart. Glory, God is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit's presence. God, your word is true. You said that you would you would send the Holy Spirit, the comforter for us. We can't see you. We can see that we can't see the Holy Spirit, but we know, we know that the Holy Spirit is here, that He dwells inside of us when we utter our praises when we wake up in the mornings when we put Hallelujah. ourselves to bed we know that the day was because the holy spirit's presence was with us he speaks to us he comforts us and oh god we thank you this morning however god we pray for liquid fire among the saints in this place we pray that you will send liquid fire that persons cannot sit or stand but all those who are convicted will move around with the conviction of the holy spirit this morning god we know when fire fire is at our tails we cannot stay still so I pray that you will send that. Send a time of refreshing for the saints here who are dying in spirit. Whose lives have caused them to be distressed, despondent. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up. God is here. He is the King of glory. And we know, O oh God, that you are ready to do a mighty work in this Hallelujah. place this morning. Prepare the hearts, O oh God. Prepare the hearts. Surprise even some of us this morning. Thank you, Lord, for what you already started. And we are even more thankful for what you are going to do this morning. In the meantime, O oh God. I pray that our hearts will be lifted up unto you in praise and you'll honor us in Jesus' name. Amen. I ask that you join me in prayer as I reflect, reflected on coming to pray. I was moved to think about how many of us are losing our confidence in the God who never fails, in the God who lives and reigns supreme in the heavens, in the God who does not dwell in temple made by human hands. And I just want to, as we go into the time of prayer, read from Hebrews 10:32 to 38 which says remember those early days after you have received the light when you endure great conflict full of suffering sometimes you were publicly publicly exposed to insult and persecution 
at other times you stood side by side with those who were treated so you suffered along with those who were in prison and joyfully accepted the confiscation of your property because you knew that you yourselves had better and lasting possessions so do not throw away your confidence it will be richly rewarded you need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God you will receive what he has promised for in a little time he will come and he will not delay but the righteous must live by faith and I take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back join me in prayer because the word of God encourages us to take heart amidst the tides of life when the storm clouds rage when the struggles of life come at us the distinguishing mark of the Christian is his response is his response in light of the troubles that come is he anchored does he still have the confidence in God let us pray Lord we have a lot to say when we reflect on what is happening around us Lord there are perils there are troubles in the land there are heartaches there are broken pieces Lord the struggles move us and shake us the storm cloud rages before us in our lives in our communities and all around Lord but Lord we come with confidence knowing that the Sun still shines Lord we know that amidst what we are going through Lord it does not phase you and so in light of that Lord God we come with eyes of faith and confidence knowing oh God that you hold tomorrow and Lord with confidence that you hold our hands with confidence that you have not left us in the tides of life God I pray that you remind your people you remind your people to take heart to take courage to see the forces of enemy but still remain standing firm God we remember how you called Joshua the nations were set before him he had this great land to conquer but you said to him be confident in the Lord God may we by faith hold firm to the rock that never moves God we pray for our nation father it seems as though we have gone our own way and we are reaping what we have sowed we are reaping the havoc Lord we see the violence against our youth God we see that little girl that was snuffed out Lord we see the issue the freak accident at Clan Carty and Lord these things astonish us these things are appalling Lord these things tend to sway our mind and our thinking to ask where are you to ask how or why but Lord give us the faith to see that you still sit on your throne and you are in charge God remind us that you are eternal God remind us that you are faithful 
God remind us that you are a keeper. God remind us that you are our refuge and strength. Lord remind us that you are our salvation. That you are our righteousness. That you are our rock. That you O oh God are the stronghold of our lives. And Lord nothing that comes our way. Will shift our focus. Lord teach us to set our eyes on you. Lord, teach us to set our eyes on you who, who started our faith and who is able to finish it. For you, O oh God, work the work to completion. God, we cry to you this morning for the sick among us. We cry to you, Lord, for the grieving among us. Lord, we cry to you, O oh God, to come to our aid. Lord, I pray for Brother John Nielsen. Oh God, I pray, Lord, that you will touch his body. God, surprising news to us. But Lord, it did not surprise you. Father, I pray, oh God, that you will lift his faith. I pray, O oh God, that you will help him to have this firm grip in you. I pray, O oh God, as you ask Martha, do you believe? May he have the confidence to remain committed. May he not turn aside from you amidst the illness of cancer. Lord, I pray for healing for Sister Bram. We have been crying out, Lord. I pray, O oh God, that you will touch her. I pray, O oh God, that you will cover her and you will wash her afresh by your spirit. That you will renew her in the inner man. Lord, I pray that you lift our heads above the waters. Lord, I thank you for Sister Davis who is in our midst. You have brought her thus far and you will continue to keep her. Lord, remind her to remain confident in you. Lord, I pray for our youths. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that you will not cause them to go astray. O oh God, that you will not let up, but you will hold them close to your heart. Father, in this change in time, Lord God, I pray, O oh God, that you will reach our youths, O oh God. I pray that, Lord God, you will cover them and you will pull them close to you, Lord. Build their faith, reconstruct their faith, O oh God. Father, we cry to you. And we believe, O oh God, that you are able to do much more than we ask or think. Or imagine, Lord. Father, we are going into the time of retreat. God, and you are calling us to realignment, Lord. You are calling us to refocus. You are calling us to be relevant. And Lord, you are calling us to remain committed to the message that you have given to us. Father, we, may we not do this ministry for the hype. May we not do this ministry for boasts or for the eyes to see and for gravitation to come because we, have, we are full of fluffs. But may we be full of substance in your word. God, when the world changes, it is your word that stands secure. You said that your word stands secure in the heavens. Lord, we are doing well if we truly stay committed to your word. God, may we not go astray from your word. May we not deviate from truth. May we not follow the kinds of things that are around us that exist in churches. May we not go after prosperity like the world is going after it. May we not run after 
material things. May we not run after the things that catches our eyes and tickle our fancy. May we not have itching ears, O oh God, to run after every ideology that's around. Lord, cause us to stick close to your word. Call us back to your word. Father, help us to set our house in order. Help us, O oh God, to set our focus on you. May we rely on the power of your word for transformation and nothing else. May we not lean on our own strength and our own understanding. Lord, as we go into retreat, Lord, speak to us. Speak to us and so, Lord, we can shut up and listen to you. Lord, speak to those who will speak to us so that, Lord God, we will know that you are leading us, Lord. May we not go a foot further without you give the instruction. May we not take a step further without we hearing from you, Lord. Lord, reach us at our points of need and administer your love and your care and your comfort and your peace and your correction. Oh God. Father, thank you for hearing us this morning. Thank you for speaking to us as you continue to speak to us, Lord. As we give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name. Amen. Morning again, everybody. Just want us to be remind ourselves as pastor prayed that the name of the lord is a strong tower the righteous run into it and we are saved amen we are healed we have gotten what his promises gives the peace 
passeth all human understanding. Hallelujah. I just want to welcome all of us here this morning, those of us who have been coming for years, weeks, months, and you're here today, especially those of us who are coming for the first time. I wonder if they are first timers, would you take a stand so the ushers could see you, so they could welcome you? Anybody for the first time? all right doesn't seem so so bless the lord anyhow that you're here and that your ears will be attentive to the word today and we will be better christians tomorrow and onwards amen bless the lord i want to just make um elder will come in a moment to read these two but I want to, two things I want to highlight. This evening at 5.30, you must notice, you would have noticed that the ushers are giving you some cards, some nice little cards about what is going to happen this evening. We have two, this, we have this evening the missions and evangelism awareness presentations. We promised our church that every three months we're going to hold this before us and entitled out of the comfort zone at 5 30. and we have two guests coming in this evening one is here and you will hear from her this evening and i'm inviting all of us to come back this evening to hear what's happening on the field and right here the second thing if you look in your bulletin on the fourth bullet point you will see AT Mission 2019, um, under advisement from our host in Haiti and others, has been postponed until further notice due to the present unrest in Haiti. I ask that you continue to pray for Haiti and Chile, as you know, our missionary Ingrid is there, and other missionaries work with her from other countries. Keep praying for them that the Lord would keep them safe. I was talking to, to her earlier this week and I was wondering what was happening and she says, Elder, I'm okay. I don't need to come home. All right, because we have to check on them periodically to see how they're doing. All right, so we continue to meet and to continue to do our fundraisers. So when the the call from Haiti is has come to us, then we can know when and how to go. Thank you so much, Elder. Very good morning to you all. <clears throat> uh, we also want to welcome those who have joined us on the internet through Facebook Live. I think that's the only way we're streaming this morning. Uh, we're having some challenges with our website, but uh, tell your friends that they can look up on Facebook for the church or for the school and they will find us there on Facebook. All right, so, uh, but we just want to welcome you. Uh, I think I'm going to ask um, Pastor Cabon to just come and give us a special youth announcement at this time. All right, good morning, everyone. Again, um, we, I'm here to announce that this month, November, is Youth Month. And I'm seeing the youths in the house. Can I get a, something from the youths? All right, so this is your month. And um, we are, I'm sharing with you what we have in store. So last Friday, we went to uh, Portmore Gospel Assembly. And we had a great time in the Lord as we uh, mingled with other young people from other church, from the other church. And um, Friday coming will be Menti Mentors Night, and we'll have that at one thirty-seven Andrea Crescent. I think that is Sister Mills. Is is, is that you? Yes. So we'll share um, at the Mills Mills's house, and uh, please 
um, if you can come out, just come out and share with our youths because it's mentor, mentee. And for those who have a mentee, um, we're expecting to see you there. Uh, Friday, November 15th will be a youth praise night. And the church, you are all invited to share with us. So don't leave us out. Um, we're, we're fighting against something, you know. One of the things we're fighting against is segregation between age so we don't want to be over there and the rest of you are over there. Let us come together and fellowship together in the Lord. And uh, September 16, um, let me tell you that we are, uh, November, sorry, it's my month. Uh, September is in my, November 16, um, we will be going to two homes from members of this church to cook and to do all sorts of things and so we are trying to engage the community like that. And so we are asking for your prayers and your support. And I think that if we want some food, don't you want to, Shelly? Yeah, we are begging us some food, kindly. Um, can I say it that way? <laughs> yes. And um, to share with those who are shut in and so forth. And we'll continue like that. Um, the 23rd, we will be out of here to National Con convention youth convention nmym conference and convention um saturday well that's that's our next um outreach well it's two saturdays we are doing the outreach so you see we're onto something here and the 24th is convention so mm -hmm. please keep us in your prayers the young people will be in action for the different Sundays of this month. So we'll be reading the Bible, we'll be sharing the word and all of that. So continue to pray for us as we give God praise together. Amen. Okay, thank you, Pastor Kabon. Uh, one notice that is not in your bulletin that needs to be read. Uh, next week Sunday will be um, we'll be having with us the uh, members of the Caribbean community for of retired persons CCRP um, and CGM Gallagher insurance brokers will they will be here to share with us um, on this very interesting offer uh, for persons over 50 so it's not only those who are retired but those who are over 50 all right okay and um this there is now a period of open enrollment on the plan until the 30th of november and um all you need to do is to take your trn and an id for enrollment um, and there are some other details about persons nursing in nursing homes and so on will not be accepted. Um, Pre-existing conditions will not be covered for the first six months. The premium payment window is now open until November 22nd, and um, the premium are as follows. And well, I'm going to well let me read it. The premium are as follows for persons 50 to 65. It's 6,399 per month. Person 66 to 70 is 7,122 per month. And 71 and over, 8,017 per month. And you get an insurance card that you will assist you with your medications, uh, doctor bills, and so on. So um, I'm asking that we pay very uh, close attention next week, Sunday, they'll be here to tell us more about it and we believe that it is something that can assist us um, those of who are caring for our parents or those of who are of that age group um, I believe it is something worthwhile looking at uh, in, uh, for, for, for the future um, just to also make quickly mention that uh, we are joined closer and closer to retreat so the, the leaders' retreat will be on Friday and Saturday of, of this weekend coming. And we ask that you pray for us as a church. Um, we have been having a series of uh, meetings uh, in preparation for the retreat. And um, 
we you know just to see if we can pull things together and each time we have one of those meetings the last of which was uh, on Thursday we're realizing how much it is that we need to do um, as leaders and we ask for your, your you know for special prayers for us I, I would also ask that we recognize Wednesday as a day of prayer and fasting uh, as we go into retreat but that doesn't stop us from uh, uh, going into fasting for the, the, the remainder of this week um, straight through um, to retreat. But we really crave your prayers that uh, the Lord will really um, uh, uh, lead us by his Holy Spirit and that we will uh, make the decisions that he wants to be made concerning the ministry here at Pope More Missionary. We're also looking at December 1. Um, that's a watch date also because it's the 45th anniversary uh, celebration. Uh, our service starts at, I keep making this correction, please. It is not 6 o'clock, it is 5 o'clock. Um, so please, uh, PM. <laughs> 5 PM. All right, so please um, bear that in mind then we look forward to a great time of celebration um, on that evening. Um, I think Elder has gone through all the evangelism and missions notices, so just to jump down to um, YAF, the um, YAF will have a, a, a session, Money and its Impact on Relationships. And that's November 23rd, so please mark that date. The Eltham Missionary Church will have their harvest celebration um, this coming weekend uh, with, a, with a supper at, um, on Friday. And the cost is $1,000 and then their harvest service on Sunday. So we ask as many as possible to support the Eltham Missionary Church for their harvest supper and also their harvest service. The, there's a notice there for um, Ezekiel Murdoch. We will inform you more of the funeral arrangements. Of, and this is the uncle of Sister Hortens Gregory Nelson. Also, the funeral service of Leon Lane, brother of Sister Watkins, um, will be held November 17th at 10 o'clock over there at Christ Church in Port Antonio. And, oh, it's the 16th. Okay, so it's really the 16th, all right? And that's over there in Port Antonio. And we ask that those who are interested to give their names to the office um, for, for uh, uh, transportation to that funeral. Also in the school, students aged, to four, aged 4 to 12 years are being reminded today is memory versation, versathon. I always say versi. Versus <laughs> on uh, competition. All right, so bring your best game. All right, um, so we remind those age four through 12. We have two cards here also. Um, the, to the Portmore Missionary Church from Catherine Brown, uh, JCCEF, Jamaica Child Evangelism Fellowship. Thanks for being a blessing to me and my ministry all these years. You played a big part with your support in reaching so many children in Jamaica and the Eastern Caribbean where the Lord has used me to minister. Great is your reward in heaven. Thanks again. May the Lord bless you and the church. Amen. And Catherine is, she, oh, she's upstairs, right. And she will be speaking uh, sharing this evening in the missions service, all right? So um, that's from Catherine. And also, a thank you card. The family of the late Gloria Mitchell Griffiths wishes to express our heartfelt gratitude for your tremendous support during our time of grief. We thank you for all the prayers, calls, visits, and kind thoughts extended to us. May God continue to bless you all with sincere appreciation for your thoughtfulness. Sincerely, the Mitchell family. So these are some thank you cards that has come to us. All right, please remember 
that communion is served after, um, immediately after the service and also that those who um, were recently baptized will be received in uh, given the right hand of fellowship in our communion service. Let's continue to pray for each other. Uh, just to mention um, here that um, uh, Brother Cover prayed for our brother John Nielsen and um, uh, he has been diagnosed with stage 4 cancer and Sister Nielsen is right here. Um, so let's be praying for Sister Nielsen and Brother John um, as, we, as we, we believe God for um, a work, a divine intervention in that situation. So let's, let's continue to bear up each other in prayer and especially those who are not well. God bless you. Thank you, Elder. I hope you'll keep your bulletin with you this week so you could see what's happening during this week. We're going to invite our ushers to come and serve us again this morning as we collect the morning's tithes and offering and special missions offering that goes to our missionaries and projects that we have all over the world and in Jamaica. We will sing number eight. Praise to the Lord the Almighty the king of creation praise to the lord the almighty the king of creation Oh, my soul, praise Him, for He is the help and salvation. For in now to His temple draw near, join me in glad adoration. Praise to the Lord, who all things so wondrous. We reign shelter the under his wings, yes, so gently as death. Hast thou not seen how all these longings have been granted in what he ordained? Praise to the Lord, who doth prosper thy work and defend thee. Surely is goodness and mercy there daily attend thee. what the Almighty can do, if with his love he befriend Praise to the Lord, who oh, let all things me adore Him. All oh, that at life and breath come now with praises before Him. Let the Amen sound from His people again. Glory we adore Thee. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Let's all stand together. Oh, my soul, praise Him for He is Thy salvation. To his temple draw near, praise him in glad adoration. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for taking us here safely today. Thank you for your many blessings upon our lives, Lord. Thank you for providing for us. So Hallelujah. We can give you back a portion of what you have blessed us with. 
We pray, Lord, that you will use it. You will, be, you will allow it to be used to further your work here on earth. And for the walk up that is to come, we pray that you will continue to be with the missionaries and you will steer the missions, Lord God, so that everything that you ordain will be done in your honor and glory. We thank you for everything, Lord, and we give you all praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Musicians, continue. Say amen. Amen, amen, amen. In this order, we're going to continue the service. We have a special item from Christian, Christian Watson. And then we have, after that, the prayer for the children, Sister Tashana Wellington. And then the scripture reading, the choir. And then Reverend Spencer Cahoon will come with the word. Good morning, church. Good morning. Um, my name is Christian Watson, and on drums we have Darian Jackson, and I'll be ministering a piece I wrote for the Talent and Craze, which I came second, and I hope that it ministers your heart. I'm Mr. I. I am a Christian child. I am a Christian child. Jesus take me out of sin, bring me to the Christian life. He prays him and make him finish till my life. I me no care what them want to bash and say. Me a go prays him all night and day. Them we must got them kick, must got them kneel up him and but at the end of the day, him must still win a man. The winner man, he must still the winner man He must my father, my keeper, my peacemaker My doctor, my savior, my way maker Oh, my flip them good things, yeah So Satan, get away, you no belong over ya, get away Me say I am a Christian child I am a Christian child Me don't make up my mind, me not go turn back See it and drops, them now go make me stop my mind, focus on the Lord, me no time for a drop. Anything in my way that I get chopped. And me say, I am a Christian child. I am a Christian child.
of the King. Little children rejoice, you're a child of the King. Rejoice, you're a child of the King. Rejoice, you're a child of the King. Lift your head up high and rejoice, you're a child of the King. Good morning, church. Good morning, boys and girls. We are going to look to the Lord in prayer at this time. Father, we give you glory and we give you honor this morning for who you are. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love. We thank you, Almighty God, for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon our lives. We thank you, Almighty God, for these precious gems, for these beautiful, innocent lives, Almighty God. Father God, this morning as they stand at the altar, Father God, I thank you that their parents saw it fit to send them to the house of the Lord Almighty God. Lord God, the disciples forbid the children, but you said, suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for such as these are the kingdom of heaven. And Father God, this morning, we just decree and declare, Almighty God, that according to your word in Isaiah 54 and 13, that our children are taught of the Lord and great is their peace, Almighty God. And so, Lord God Almighty, this morning, we ask that you will open up their hearts and their minds to receive your word and father god this morning we pray that as young samuel heard your voice at a young age may they come to recognize your voice almighty god may they come to know the voice of the lord and may they come to accept you at an early age almighty God father God we see the many atrocities that is happening to our children but this morning almighty God we just ask that you will cover them under your blood we pray almighty God that you will thicken the hedge of protection round about them mighty God we cancel the plans of the adversary concerning our children concerning their future concerning their destiny in the mighty name of Jesus Jesus Christ of Nazareth this morning and father God we just pray that you will hide them that you will cover them with your feathers almighty God father God we thank you for the teachers and father God as they impart the word of God we ask oh God that you will give them clarity and that you will give them wisdom as to how to break the word so that they will understand almighty God bless them this morning cover them under your blood we give you thanks and we give you praise in no other name but in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Little children rejoice. You're a child of the King. Rejoice. You're a child of the King. Rejoice. You're a child of the King. Lift your head up high and rejoice. You're a child of the King. Little children rejoice. You're a child of the King. Rejoice. You're a child of the Good morning, church. The scripture reading will be taken from Psalms chapter 136. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to him who alone does mighty miracles. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to him who made the heavens so skillfully. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to him who placed the earth among the waters. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to him who made the heavenly lights. His faithful love endures forever. 
the sun to rule the day. His faithful love endures forever, and the moon and stars to rule the night. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to him who killed the firstborn of Egypt. His faithful love endures forever. He brought Israel out of Egypt. His faithful love endures forever. He acted with a strong hand and powerful arm. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to him who parted the Red Sea. His faithful love endures forever. He led Israel safely through. His faithful love endures forever. But he hurled Pharaoh and his army into the Red Sea. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to him who led his people through the wilderness. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to him who struck down mighty kings. His faithful love endures forever. He killed powerful kings. His faithful love endures forever. Sion, king of the Amorites. His faithful love endures forever. And Og, king of Bashan. His faithful love endures forever. God gave the land of these kings as inheritance. His faithful love endures forever. A special possession to his servant Israel. His faithful love endures forever. He remembers us in our weakness. His faithful love endures forever. He saves us from our enemies. His faithful love endures forever. He gives food to every living thing. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven. His faithful love endures forever. Here ended the reading of a portion of God's holy word. Thank you. 
Good morning. I did not tell them what song to sing, but they sang the right song. Thank God. That's how his spirit leads. I want to thank Scott Spence for reading the passage for me. And Scott, I'd love to see you and Nathan and Jonas, Italia, Laurie Lee, Daniel. Guess what? It's Missions Awareness um, evening this evening, and you have a little story as usual. You see, the Missions Awareness is not just going to be telling you about missionaries on the field and not going to be telling you about stuff happening elsewhere, but what we want to happen here and how this gives us responsibility, how we should become aware of our responsibility, understanding the nature of the mission of the church, Portmore Missionary. And so um, I'd love to have those young people again. Um, they do some things very well. And so right after church, uh, the names I've called and the company, will you stay back uh, with me for a few minutes, please? I'm delighted to be here today, and I'm delighted to hear the choir in that tremendous way under the leading of the Spirit, because it's like they sang my message. I'm grateful to God that His Spirit leads us in our undertakings so that we understand it's not our work, like it is God's work, and it is God who guides, and it's God who overrules, even as he would supervise everything we prepare to do when we prepare for each Sunday service. We don't prepare to hear good news or to receive good news. But that comes, I mean bad news, I should say. We just wish it would be good news all the time. But how can we not pause to cry and pray, you know, and trust God with John, his wife, and the rest of that family? when they hear bad news and to partner you know with our sister as she prayed during that time prayed with um, Pastor Kavon uh, in that intercessory moment um, Sister Nielsen we don't know what God is doing but God is just an amazing God who in the worst of our circumstances along these corridors of life um, does the strangest things to manifest forth his power and his glory. And God will get the glory. I know you're a young convert. Your husband too is a young convert. You've come to us only last year. Um, the truth is, he's our strong tower. He's our shield and buckler. He's our defense. You know, he is our everlasting portion. More than friend and life to us. And so I want you to take comfort in God's word and to understand that the things we don't... Uh, grasp uh, the very things God has worked out for good to them that love him and to them who are called according to his purpose I could only cry and pray with you but God will give the victory amen he will give the victory so we open up our Bibles back to that wonderful passage that Scott read for us, but I've tied to that passage four verses from 
118 psalm psalm 118 it coincides beautifully with this 26 verses read from psalm 136 for this psalm is also saying oh give thanks unto the lord for he is good for his mercy or his love endures forever let the house of israel also say thanks for his love and mercy endures forever let the house of aaron says it as well his love endures forever and how can we leave out our church let the the, the portmore missionary church also say it your house and my house as well give thanks for his love endures forever can we say that together his love endures forever heavenly father as we open up your sacred writ and try to grasp from that wonderful backdrop that Spence read for us and what other psalms would say as we are reminded of your goodness your greatness and your glory may the words of our mouths as well O oh God and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight you're our Lord you're our strength and our Redeemer please touch my voice and help me to be able to speak the words that you would have challenged me to speak to your people in Jesus name amen give thanks tell somebody beside you give thanks tell somebody else give thanks I thought that's the best way to begin today to share with you in this service as we now embark on the second to last step in the year 2019 we've looked back at 10 months past and November is the month when we anticipate the excitement of the climaxing of another year as we look forward to Christmas and as we look forward to a new year though we do not know if God will spare us but just in case he spares us we are going to have to understand how important it is to give thanks you did not have to be breathing today you did not have to be um, in a job you do not have to have good health you did not have to you know you're not better than anybody else crying in pain in the hospital <clears throat> you're not better than anybody getting the news that there's cancer in your body you are not better than anybody else that you see on the street perhaps today on the, scraping from garbage bin but today we are cognizant of one thing it is that god has been good to us and that god is a great god and in spite of all that we are seeing around us as uh, to get us discouraged and to bring disappointment and to even mourn the loss of our loved ones we can still give thanks hallelujah we can still give thanks in the year 358 
in a place called Alexandra in Egypt. There was one bishop of a church. His name was Authentis, Authenticus. He was a bishop of a vast congregation that met one night for an all-night prayer meeting. Perhaps it was in November or December because they thought it was fitting to give thanks to God and to do it all night. But church history tells us in the midst of their thanksgiving, the government, which was a pagan government at the time, set soldiers loose on that vast congregation because they did not believe in the God of the Alexandra church. That is to say, the true and living God, the one we have gathered to worship this, this morning. But Bishop stood up and he said to his congregation, come hell or high water, as we would say it, we will not relent. We will give thanks to God when they put the guns at our heads, when they, when they ill-treat us and when they mock us and when they scourge us, we will give thanks to God. And he said to the congregation, let's open up to Psalm 136 and you will end each verse, the 26 verses, as how it is written, as I read a, the A section of each verse, you would respond, even when the soldiers uh, come into the church, and when they try to silence us, we will echo and re-echo, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever for this psalmist take note that thanksgiving begins with the awareness of the goodness of god if you leave here i'd like you to take that first point with you that according to the psalmist he's making it clear that thanksgiving begins with the awareness of the goodness of God. We oftentimes say God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. And God is good because he is God, yes. But God is good in spite of the fact that we are bad. God is still good. And if God was not good to us, even when we are bad, he would still be God. Because he is this great God as the choir sang. How big is God? He is big enough to control the universe. You and I come to understand that we are here today but for the goodness of God. God is good. And the goodness of God can be underscored in spite of all that has happened in our world and how crooked it has become and how twisted it has become. And you and I have seen unrighteousness come to our shores like a great tsunami. But we know that God is good. I'd like to say four things about God being good like that. The first thing I want you to note is that God is good. And according to the psalmist, I begin to give God thanks. Because of the awareness of the goodness of God. Why? Because of his love. Folks, 
It's a simple message today to all of us, but it's profound. For when we think of the love of God that the songwriter says is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star and it reaches to the lowest hell. That means it has no width, it has no height, it has no depth, it, it, it is bigger than us. Oh, we run joke about how much we love and we run jokes about falling in love. And it is no wonder somebody says, love is the feeling that you feel and when you feel it, you turn fool. And that's so true then of the man who says, well, if loving you is wrong, I don't want to be right. Don't that sound fool? Because the truth is, you can say lyrics and you can echo and re-echo all of that. But young ladies, can I tell you, when a man comes and expresses love like that, watch him. Because he's not going to be altogether true to that. I can tell you as a counselor, and I can tell you as a married man, the reality is that we twist things and we turn things and we don't really mean what we say at times. Oh, you don't know it. But it's the truth, my brothers and sisters. You see, with this thing called love, there is what is called the Stargy law. And that is defined as, um, you know, the love of parent to offspring or offspring to parents. And that kind of love we try to understand because not all the time things go well with parents and children. We could say a whole lot about that. But that's the Stargy love. There is the other love that is philia. The love that speaks to friendships. And oh how friendships are important. But don't sometimes some friends salt you up. The truth is. The philia love is the love that speaks to friendship. But it speaks to some other things, my brothers and sisters. And you are going to have to understand that, hello, yes, arms of flesh will fail you. You dare not trust your own. And there comes the time along the course of life, only God is trustworthy. Only God never fails well there is the eros love the eros love and we hear of that being the romantic love we hear of the the eros love as what is calculating and what can be erratic and emotional and so, brothers and sisters, though we're hearing stoggy love and filial love and, and we're hearing this kind of love called eros, there is the love that we have come to learn about and continue to learn about. And there is that love that was shed abroad in our hearts. And that love is the love that is genuine love. It's called agape. It's God's love. And guess what? This is the unconditional love. When the psalmist begins by saying that thanksgiving begins with the awareness of the goodness of God, he is saying this because he comes to understand the awareness of God's love god is good like that 
He loves unconditionally. He loves us not because we're pretty. He loves us not because we're rich. He loves us not because we come from this pedigree. He loves us in spite of. And today my message is about God's love for you. After somebody has booted you out. After somebody has given up on you. After somebody has failed you in your love relationship. Whether this be a friend or family. I don't care who it is. But there is a love that is left unconditionally. It is love like no other love. The songwriter says there is no love like the love of Jesus. Boundless and pure and free. That's God's love for the crushed and the ruined and the disappointed and the, 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 the disenfranchised. This is God's love for everyone across the globe. Just imagine. Unconditional love. And so, brothers and sisters, I invite us to give thanks to God when he loves us like that. When he loves us impartially when he loves us sacrificially when he loves us unconditionally and when he loves us eternally but i sense that the psalmist speaks to the fact as he brings us into the awareness of the goodness of god that he also speaks of god's grace I think Kavan made some high points this morning on RGR as he talks about God's grace as it comes to us from the book of Ephesians. And I concur with you, Pastor. It is true because when we think of the goodness of God, how can we not think of how he envelops us in his grace? For grace is God giving to us what we do not really deserve it is God's riches at the expense of his son Jesus Christ it is an unmerited favor it is God doing for you what no one else would be able to do for you and when you can come to understand the goodness of God because of grace you come to understand a love that is never ever going to wax cold and a love that will love you no matter what your mistakes are and no matter where you are at in your sojourn of life God is good because of his love and God is good because of his grace. But God is also good because of his mercy. If grace is God giving to us what we do not deserve, then understand this. Mercy is God withholding from us what we really deserve. And every day we should be saying, Lord, have mercy upon me. Because we deserve judgment. We deserve the penalty. We deserve the punishment. But for God's love and God's grace and God's mercy. When he withholds from us what we truly deserve. But the goodness of God that the psalmist calls us into the awareness of. Is not only what is speaking to love and grace and mercy like what is speaking to justice god is a god who is just and we may fear that because he's going to judge us but just think about it how would you like him to judge you as you rightfully deserve you see, his righteousness, when we understand God's justice, we always have to understand his righteousness. Because learn this, 
It is his righteousness that cannot cope with sin. And every day we sin and he hasn't cut us off. We're still in the land of the living. And we can still hope that in the land of the living and in the land of the dying that we can say have mercy on me remember me and there's a God who stands ready like he was on the cross paying the penalty for our sins and seeing one who was guilty and deserving of death and he was feeling the pangs and the pain of death like that man he did not say oh you deserve it I don't he said you are welcome come into my paradise i see myself and i see my sins it is no wonder the psalm the writer says my sin all the blessed of this glorious day my sin not in part but a whole was nailed to the cross and i bear it no more praise the lord praise the lord oh my soul let everything that hath breath praise the Lord because God is good like that we come into the awareness of the goodness of God in the state of our wickedness God is good thank God for his love thank God for his grace thank God for his mercy thank God he is just but let me quickly make the second point for the truth is this, the psalmist begins with the awareness of the goodness of God. But he says, the psalmist is saying, I'll continue with the acknowledgement of the greatness of God. The choir sang it. The choir sang it so well. It's like, it's like they heard me preparing. And they heard and they read my mind. The great, have you ever stopped to think of the greatness of God? Have you ever been arrested by the greatness of God? And you don't have to be even thinking of any landscape. You don't have to be taken anywhere and look at any engineering skillfulness on the part of man. Just look at how he keeps things together in the universe and how he keeps your mind and how you go down to sleep and you wake up and you're able to go at a job and you're able to find back your address hello folks somebody needs to praise the lord if you can go to work and come back home and you're in your right mind let everything that his love endures forever I, I challenge you every day every every day just just close your Bible sometimes and and just begin to think of the the awesomeness of God in the land of the living how he clothes you in your right mind. How like sheep we were gone astray. Turned everyone to our own way. But for God. But for God. There, there, there are three things as we consider the greatness of God. And I want us to think of his power. I want us to think of his provision. And I want us to think of his preservation. God is so powerful. Just imagine this earth's surface is, is, is you know, covered with water, some 71% water. And, 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 and just imagine this, the, the oceans have some 96, over 96% 96 of water. And you're walking around with some 70% water in you. And you go thirsty you become dehydrated and God has a way of channeling and sourcing and processing clean water for you to quench your thirst or to rehydrate you when you're in the hospital 
about to die oh you haven't stopped to think of the goodness of god you walk around with water in your body even your little pet dog has some 70 percent water as well awesome god he is living water he is all that we need to quench our thirst and to bring lasting satisfaction and significance to our lives just stop to think of his power the psalmist says it in one of the verses look back at it for yourselves he is so awesome in power and in another verse he says it he provides food for the hungry remember when spence read that he provides food for the hungry and you don't have to go packing a storehouse of oranges and yam and hope you won't run out for your 70 or 80 years on earth no because god knows how to bring manna today and bring manna tomorrow you can trust his faithfulness he speaks to the earth's crust and he's able to bring food from the earth's crust your orange trees will bear That's the awesomeness of God. Have you been brought into this awareness and this acknowledgement of the goodness and the greatness of God? Every day I come to realize my own insignificance. Coming back from a funeral yesterday, we were thinking, Andrew and myself, of this young man, of a great friend of ours who just, you know, was snuffed out like that. 33 years old, just got married three years ago. They're planning now to have children. And his car just ran off the road and into a light pole and he was stone cold dead and when mommy heard that from afar she fainted and had to be taken to the hospital my young 33 years old boy gone I sense my brothers and sisters that we are just so powerless but for the power of God as we live and move and have our being it's in him that we live and every time I hear as I sat with my sister this morning and hear of her dear husband tall and big and cracking over 200 pounds on the scale and just suddenly hearing of this creepy cancer that comes to his body i hear my sister in a devotion very quite recently who said i now walk through the valley of the shadow of death but i fear no evil and when i looked at my sister she's the one who follows me and i said what gives you the strength and she says god it's the power of god folks you may read a lot and you may have a phd in something you may be a doctor in the hospital or nurse or you may be a manager at your business but can i just tell you you have no power except god's power come on just just give him worship you have absolutely no power let's let's understand our fragility and our brevity and our uncertainty in this life i can't forget walking into jamaica house some time ago the government was having the retreat and they asked me to speak and one politi politician came down to meet me and when i was in the elevator going up with him the elevator stuck and he looked at me and he said well rev if you weren't in here i don't know what i would do because i know you're a man of god 
and I looked at him and I said when it's stuck I never knew what to do either but to pray make sure that your power is in God not anybody else's for there are times when some trust in chariots and some in horses but we will remember the name of the Lord our God I said to the politician I fear too but I have a God who can protect me and all of us need God for ourselves when the calamities of life come to us we can cry like the psalmist I'll take my refuge in him until all the calamities of life are overpassed everybody needs to get there where they understand they're powerless but God is all powerful and but for the power of God we will not be able to survive anybody thanking God for his power this morning come on give him a club oh, whatever God did and you proved his power give him praise in the house oh give thanks unto the Lord for he is good for his mercy endures forever we come into the awareness of the goodness of God but we come into the awareness of the greatness of God God is all powerful come on give him some praise give him some praise I walked into the Jamaica house with the politician being rescued from the stock elevator and I said to all these powerful leaders there's no power like the power of Jesus I flipped the Bible over to Psalm 139 and I showed them that God is all-powerful and that we are subjected to the power of God, including politicians. And I told them that God is present everywhere, like he's powerful everywhere. And that he's also all-knowing and that he knows the constituencies they were in. And I told them that, listen, God knows them too, even before they go into the constituencies and it's the power of god that we must come to understand as we navigate our way through the corridors of this life it is the power of god that matters most we are powerless for we are his subjects he is our superior But God is powerful and God provides for his people. The psalmist says, yes, he does that for his people. And then he said, he preserves us. Read, this, read that psalm again. and Read through Psalm 118 as well. He preserves. Now, God preserves all of us for a purpose. And he wants us to fulfill that purpose before we die. You better understand it. On March 20 this year, after coming out of a major surgery, I was healing so nicely. I felt so good. Only to realize that my car was head on with another car. And then another one coming from a, a minor intersection makes three of us colliding. And I thought I heard the worst impact ever that I ever heard in my sojourn in life. It sounds strange. It sounds like the towing of a bell of doom in gloom. I sense everything was gone. I was wondering, am I in this world or am I out of the world? Where am I now? Where am I now? And then I just lifted my lips to say, thank you, Jesus. 
That's how it ended. And smoke all around. After tires and noise and in a jiffy, people from Portsmouth, Waterford, or I don't know where they came from. And everybody just thought, this is fatal. They called the police station. And two police station they reported to, they say it's fatal. Police came and spot and asked, where are the dead? I was one of the living dead. Standing up before the policeman. And he wondered what car you were in. That black car over there. Are you okay? Another cop came along. We need to take him to the doctor. We don't know if he's bleeding inside. I said, I'm looking for my phone to call my people there. Not even a fingernail. All bags blown in the car. Car totally written off. I'm telling you of the power of God. I'm telling you about God's provision and his pro, pro, persever, um, preservation. God preserves our life for a purpose. He saw me here preaching the first Sunday in November. Long time. He preserves our lives for a purpose. I'm not a mistake. I don't want to become the big mistake in life oh i have made excuses oh yeah i may have made mistakes as well but nobody can tell me i'm any mistake in this world you're not a mistake in this world god has preserved you for a purpose you may go to the end of this year and into a new year. Are you fulfilling purpose? I'm simply asking you, my brothers, it's not now just about your job. It's not now just about your family. It's not just about your friends. It's not just about the things that are important, your further studies and the, the advancement in education and the establishment of your welfare. It is also about seeking to know this God where you come into the awareness of his goodness where you come into the awareness of his greatness and when you begin to give him the glory yeah he is God and God alone this takes us to the third and final point thanksgiving begins with the awareness of the goodness of God. God is good in love, in grace, in mercy, and in justice. But thanksgiving continues with the acknowledgement of the greatness of God. You must come with an understanding and in subjection to his power. Yea, his almighty power, his provision and his preservation but thanksgiving becomes perpetual when there is this awareness and this acknowledgement and this understanding of his glory psalm 19 i think we can all quote it the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament sure it is handiwork come on keep going day unto day utter its speech and night unto night show it knowledge well this concurs so beautifully with Psalm 136 and with Psalm 118 and the first four verses for what there is, is, an, is there is an agreement. An agreement here about God's goodness in the land of the living. God's greatness in the land of the living. But God's glory. Listen folks. With all the nahum and with all of what we are seeing happening in this world. Thank God the heavens still declare his glory you and i still see a rainbow you and i still understand the meaning of the rainbow 
you and I still understand we are in an atmospheric heaven where we all abode and we sense the power of God at work among us. But we know there is also a starry heaven, a solar system, where there is a sun that rises each day and it goes down in the evening. And we know that the stars are decorated, have decorated the skies and the pockets of clouds and the vast uh, space. And we know that there is that heaven uh, also of the heavens. But then we also know of a heaven heaven of heavens where the almighty god is so beyond the atmospheric heaven and beyond the the, the solar system the starry heaven there's a heaven of heavens and you and i have hope for that heaven of heaven wherever god is oh some people believe he cannot be found they have gone in search for him or oh, you don't have to go anywhere because the heavens declare his glory the firmament is showing it's speaking every day and so here's the reality the heavens and the and the earth are declaring the glory of god you can't get past that it is sharing it even as it is declaring it for every day you need fresh air every day you need sunlight every day you need water every day you need food help me no man every day just pause to think the list continues and that is because of the glory of god so the heavens declare it and share it but listen to this i believe the writer as he brings us into the awareness of god's glory wants us to understand something here that like the heavens do it so humans must you are not an aimless little monkey on earth you are no insignificant person because you're not the prime minister you are not just no a nobody because you live under the bridge in portmore you are a somebody why because god has revealed himself to you did you know that when god reveals himself to you you can respond and that response is worship because worship worship for real is divine revelation but it is the response to the divine revelation that encapsulates worship you respond to divine revelation to a god who reveals himself in so many different ways so you must fear it f-e-a-r and you must equally declare it you don't want to be a fool trust me you don't want to be a fool today because here's why you'll be a fool you'll be a fool if the sticks and stone rise to do that you'll be a fool if the clouds a packet of clouds do it you'll be fooled if the trees and the wind swaves uh, waves and sway because of the glory of god hear me and hear me well brothers and sisters you can't allow anything else out there to fear it and to declare it man is called to fear it and to declare it and the fear is a reverential fear it is not to run to hide it is not to cover your eyes it is to acknowledge god for who he is it is to give him reverence it is to give him worship it is to fulfill real purpose for which was intended when he created you come on clap your hands give him worship in the
not only do we find the heavens sharing it and declare it and how human being must also fear it and declare it like the heavens do but listen it is the will of god that all of earth and all of the heavens to gather declare it oh we may not be seeing this happening right now but what a day i was doing a course some years ago and i went up north for the graduation and i was in this huge church the coral ridge presbyterian church and we had some 60 odd nations on earth gathered and that church of some 10,000 members with delegates from all over the world began to sing oh lord my god each country in its own language and worship worshiping in its own culture and i was singing in english while i hear the languages of the world and i thought god understands all of this and i thought how oh. and the spirit brought to bear on my mind in that church with thousands of people the fact that where god is he looks down and he doesn't necessarily see countries and nations he sees one people we're just a grain of sand in his hand and that the god of heaven sees us no important than the other he doesn't see black or white he doesn't see poor or rich he doesn't see educated or uneducated he sees one set of people and though he looks down in his love and as long as there is that awareness of the goodness of god and as long as there's that awareness of the greatness of god and as long as there's that understanding of the glory of god let the earth praise him let the earth praise him for God is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good. His mercy endures forever and ever. Amen. Simple passages we have read every day. When you get into it, you see God in his goodness, his greatness, and in his glory. The song we're going to use just before we, some of us will leave and then we have communion is the song that the choir was singing. One of my favorite songs. And it's a great song to know that how big he is, yet small enough to live within my heart. What a God. Give him a praise. Give him a praise. Hallelujah. Choir, you could start just sing the first verse and then we do chorus maybe two times and challenge somebody who doesn't understand and who is not aware of God's goodness, his greatness, and his glory. Let's stand together. Sing, choir. Hallelujah. Listen very carefully. the reach of space to go beyond the, the distant glimmering star this birth I rule we in my master's house the open skies is a portion of his yard sing how big is God, how big and wide is vast domain, to try to tell these lips can 
only Son. He's big enough to rule this mighty universe. Yes, small enough to live within my heart. How big is God? How big is God? How big and wide is vast domain? To try to tell these lips can only start. He's big enough to rule this mighty universe. Yes, small enough to live within my heart. Let's sing that one more time. How big is God? How big and wide is vast domain To try to tell These lips can only start He's big enough To rule this mighty universe Yet small enough To live within my heart Becomes personal. Yes, yes, small enough to live within my heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you don't believe that this morning ask yourself who am I where did I come from why am I here what's my purpose the big God created you for a purpose can I tell you before you leave here he has a plan for your life you don't know that plan yet but he has a purpose and plan for your life don't leave here without knowing what that is raise your right hand with me please hallelujah the lord bless you and keep you the lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you Lord, lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And God's people say, Amen. Amen. Be seated for a little while as we recess. And remember this message. Don't let it leave you. God's goodness. God's greatness, God's glory. Remember, we have communion right after we have, some of us would have left. So we ask you to come and sit right up in the, in the chairs. And those of us who will be getting the right hand of fellowship, you know yourself, we're going to ask you to sit in the front row to my right over here. Bless the Lord. Remember as you go, there is a special, special evening for you this 